In college, I learned about the first try championships. Every day, my friends and I would set a task. Whatever it was, you had one shot to do it with no practice. So I'm bringing that to gaming. There are bound to be mistakes, but that's kind of the point. Becoming a first try champion is one part skill and one part luck. Now I'm always on the lookout for new gaming FTC challenges. MSB here, and it's time for another first try championships. Today's FTC is the game Cart Hunter, and we'll be attempting the Layer of the Trog Wizard module. As always, this is the very first time I've tried to complete this module, so let's get started. Now, the best part about Card Hunter is they've got these really great uh, modules, which has that sort of D&D, old D&D throwback. It's fantastic. I love it. In the deep holes beneath the troglodyte cave, a mysterious chanting can be heard. Are the rumors true that the troglodytes are led by a foul enchanter? Discover the truth in the lair of the trog wizard. You can see my party here. Ooh, could you pass the soda, please? This is a dark and labyrinthine stretch of tunnels, and the floor is covered with bones of indeterminate animals. It is dark and claustrophobic. Three filthy troglodytes emerge from the shadows. Ambush! So my party is a warrior, a cleric, and a mage. Um, I have uh, really geared my party to sort of clump together. Makes me vulnerable to some AoE, uh, but I feel it gives me some uh, great single target damage and some great cohesiveness. Ambush! Monstrous humanoids leap from the shadows to arms, noble adventurers. Okay, so with um, Card Hunter, you get uh, four cards. You draw two per turn. You can only hold two in hand. Uh, and there's a lot of great sort of strategy when it comes to these. Oh, I'm going to start with an unstable bolt. Knock this guy. Oh, that's amazing. Zoidberg. Awesome. Um, let's run him here to block. Oh, I can still hit. That's too bad. Uh, and I do not have a cleave, which is unfortunate. I guess what I can do is um, get him a little bit lower with spark. And, um, how about a weak chop? That'll finish one of them off. And he's running through. Ooh, they're really going to try and target this, aren't they? Um, I will try to move him in. They are really working on him. Okay, let's uh, meander on over here. Now that's um, difficult terrain, so it blocks me. And it stops my movement whenever I go through that. So I'll move back. Now if I misguided heal him, he'll die because he takes two damage first and then heals for four. So it's kind of like a combination of an attack power and and a heal. Um, I wonder if they're going to kill my guy. Oh, that was nice. Knocked him backwards. Totally, totally forgot about that. Of course, what I should have done is unholy frenzy myself first and then attacked. So that was a big disadvantage. Okay, discarding cards. Let's see if they're going to kill my... Oh, no. Excellent. So just hit the armor. Didn't roll my save. That's fine. Happy to do that. Now, let's finish this guy off. We're first going to bludgeon. So that's a single target hit. Oh, and he scuttles away. And I don't have a charge on my guy, unfortunately. Oh. I may as well unstable bolt. Unstable bolt, um, if you hold it in your hand and you select a movement action, um, it actually has a great chance to injure you. So it's one of those spells that you've got to be very careful with. But because dwarves don't move much, um, I don't really have a problem with it. So misguided heal. Heal four, may self-target, but it deals two damage and has an eight range. So it'll heal two, but what it's also great for is... to finish off. Bam! So, that's sort of um, a feel for this. Searching the cavern yields little of value, but, is re but does reveal a concealed entrance to a further warren of caves. Let's collect our loot. After every battle, you get to open a chest and you get some gear. And it's the exact same one. So, the gear actually comes with cards. And you can see here we've got armor 4, armor 1, armor 3, with a so almost guaranteed to reduce, armor value reduces the damage. So this is almost guaranteed to reduce, well it is, because it's a one plus. Reduces everything by one, and armor stays in your hand. 
And I apologize if I run through a couple of these a little bit quickly, but I think I will use the plain old armor. And collect that in. Now you only get experience at the end of a mission, which is sort of like that old D&D feel. This cavern is home and workshop of the trog wizard Krundiup. He stands at the entrance of the cavern inside an arcane symbol. Hmm. He stands at the end of the cavern inside an arcane symbol etched in the ground with a mysterious glowing substance. He is guarded by three trog spearmen and scuttlers who will lay down their lives to protect him. The trog wizard orders his guards to attack you. Defend yourself. And if reading these gets annoying, I'll stop doing that, but I figure I may as well start out with that. Now, with the wizard and three spearmen, I've really got to be careful of my wizard. Trog wizard utters vile incantations and makes obscene gestures at you. He will pay you for his obesity. Ooh, you do a treat. Traits must be played immediately, but playing one doesn't end your turn. Oh. Very well. This is a great one. Um, add one damage to any electrical attack and subtract two from block rolls versus arcane attacks you play. So it makes me very powerful. Unfortunately, I didn't really draw anything great to use with it. Okay, we've got a frenzy. Well, I can move into this and give him a shot. Let's give him frenzy that increases his melee attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, now we are going to run, and we'll go here. No, oh, backed off. Tragic. Okay, well, I will penetrating zap. I don't like him. I gotta knock him a little bit. That didn't really do anything. And to make sure that I'm still protecting my guys, I'll move into here. Hmm. Always tragic. So I will move here to protect him. He can't do anything. Uh, you can only hold two cards in hand at the end of a turn, so he's going to have to discard one. And I don't feel like using this, so I will pass my turn. And I will pass. And he basically it's fair game. Oh, good. Still nothing, because these spear guys are really annoying. I'm going to fail my armor roll. Uh, I will still pass. Okay. New round. Let's go. Devastating spark. Excellent. Um, bam. Because that did plus one damage because of my trait. So... I could attack him. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to attack him. So let's move here. He'll probably move back. Yep. Uh, nothing here. I can run in. Uh, there's no reason to really run in. Um, I, instead, am going to... Yep, no, I have to. Okay, well. Yeah, when you select a movement card, obviously that's a problem. Um, healing Presence is a really good one. Um, anyone that's in... Um, that, that's around the area, and now I'm facing the wrong way too. Oh good. Fuck any attack. Good. I took no damage. Um, so basically every turn he is going to um, heal all adjacent allies. So I want to move him up a little bit to make sure that he'll heal both of my guys. Now it doesn't heal himself, which is a little bit problematic, but still decent. Situation, situationally decent. Uh, now how am I doing? Got 10 of 6, 11 of 14, 11 of 14. So I am going to minor heal my warrior because I'm sure he's going to be running in and taking more damage like that. So yes, that's fantastic. And you know what? He's getting a little bit low, so I am going to misguided heal. He takes two, but then heals four. And obviously I can't do anything. So I'm going to pass, and I will... 
I'll destroy my simple strike because these guys may clump up a little bit and I'll get an opportunity to heal them. So two to both of them, which is great. Predictable slam. Okay. Now, I've got one run, so I'll want to only use that. Excellent. Take out the armor. Excellent. Block two. Now, what I'll want to do is likely healing presence my warrior. And I will likely also have to heal him. See, what I'm trying to do, you can still see that they've got some movement here, and he's got some movement here. So what I want to do is I want to force him to move like that. See, I fainted. And that's not F-A-I-N-T, that's F-E-I-N-T. Okay. Slowed, reduced that. Perfect. Okay, so now I've forced them to use their movement, as you can see up here. They've got no movement left, which means that my run will actually do something now. Okay, so obviously that was a big mistake, um, but I will be able to own the heck out of this guy. Unless he blocks it. Okay, so I've got a few more chances of hurting him. Hopefully he fails these. That's great. So another two. And we chop. Now one thing I learned from, because obviously this isn't the first game this um, this group has had, um, is that you want these um, anti-traits, these black ones, are anything that's bad. So this slows you down while you have it in hand. So whenever possible, if you pull a bad trait like this, keep three cards in your hand, because when you end the turn, you have to discard. See? Zot Bible Trucker has to discard. And I just discard the negative trait, and then it's done. So, really neat one. Now, unfortunately, the healing only helped here, and they're really going after him. So, that's hard to block. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do, just make sure, because he's going to have an attack, or he's going to run away, and he's got armor, so I've got to make sure that I do enough. Oh. I'll cancel. Right. Um, okay, so both my skills can't get to him. Okay, so let's take a shot. Yes! Luck is on my side. Now, what I think I need to do is... Yes! Success. That was a risk. But had to be done. Minus two. And some of these rolls go pretty quickly, as you can tell. Now, he... He can still move, which is unfortunate. So... I am going to Unholy Frenzy him. So he takes a damage and dies. Now that's a, a actually a, technically a buff, but that's the way I've sort of set up my Cleric, is to be able to do these sort of buffs and damages to do finishing because he's got big damage, he's got big attacks, so she's got sort of, you know, little hits that um, can finish off an enemy or buff for even better effects. And I've liked that, um, that setup. Perfect. Now I'm going to run up here so that way both of these guys get trade off the benefits. Um, just in case... He has um, an AoE next turn. I'm going to make sure they're not all in a row because my cleric does not need healing. So two to each. Boom, boom. And spark, and I block it. Now he's got one, so I'm going to memory loss because that drops him off and makes him not able to attack. Ooh, I love this card. Discard your oldest card when you play this. And it does 10 damage. Now that's a big effect. Discarding a card, that's not something you want to do lightly. But it's great whenever someone has armor or um, any sort of really nasty effect or, you know, large amounts of health. Just big hit and you're normally dropping off like 
an attack or a block, which you can, or I mean a movement or a block, which is fine. You are victorious. It's time to return to the service to receive the accolades of the grateful townsfolk. And I get my experience. Level four. Fantastic. Ooh, and a martial skill. Fantastic. New, uh, new equipment. Always fun. Open the chest. So, looks like today I managed to be a first try champion. Fantastic. Gonna collect all my loot. Got some rare stuff. Wild run. That looks fantastic. Excellent. And some treasure. And we've got some frothing madness. Wonderful. So, thank you very much for joining me for another first try championships. Looks like we were successful this time. Obviously, if you can glean any strategy from what I was doing, hopefully it'll help you in your game. Once again, this is MSB. And I'm wishing you good games and good times.